All right, Young and Eve, a uh, special episode from the Republica. Um, and who's my guest now? Uh, my name is Birgitta Jónsdóttir. Uh, I'm a member of the Icelandic Parliament for the second term for another party, which is called the Pirate Party in Iceland. Oh, you, you got the Pirate Party in Iceland? Yeah, we got uh, three members of Parliament out of 63 now just uh, a couple of weeks ago. Wow, uh, congratulations. Thank you. So w what brought you to, to the Republica? Uh, I was uh, last minute asked to be here to speak about uh, the constitutional process in Iceland. Why, uh, why, why, why is there a constitution process in Iceland? Uh, because we got a constitution 70 years ago given to us by the Danish king when we got our independence. Uh, and 17 or 70 years 70. ago? Uh, 70. And years ago. Yeah, and at the time it was sort of temporary. Uh, but it just shows that the parliament can't do it, so we got the nation to do it. Same here in Germany, by the way. Uh, the yeah. Grundgesetz is uh, like a temporary uh, oh, really? constitution. Oh, really? For yeah. how long? Uh, until a new constitution is voted on by the people. Ah. And uh, actually it was supposed to uh, uh, be voted on after the reu reu reunification, but it never happened. So we, oh, ca wow. we kind of have the same problem. Yeah, so uh, we actually we managed to get into a really beautiful process so uh, Ex explain uh, it to us how, yeah how, how does how does uh, making a constitution work well it depends it depends if you want the people to make it for themselves no uh, no. In, no, but in Iceland, no, we our, actually, our, the elite knows best yeah exactly that was the problem we had in Iceland for a long time but long then problem very big so just after election no just after the revolution we had uh, you had a re revolution 70 yeah. years ago no just uh, 2009 you had a revolution in 2009 yeah, it was a sort of a velvet uh, revolution. I didn't, I did, I did not know that. What happened? Uh, well, we had the world uh, was the third largest financial collapse in Iceland uh, after the financial crisis. Yeah. Uh, you know, Icelanders have this minority uh, problem because we're so few. We have to do everything really big. So uh, uh -huh. uh, they decided to give the banking sector just free reign to go insane. Uh, and and uh, they did go insane. Yeah, they managed to use the EU regulations or the EEA uh, regulations to expand into Europe and oh. open all these. It was mostly guys that used to like work on, you know, in the fishery industry and they didn't know anything about the banking sector. But they still managed to make uh, banks and uh, online banks in Germany and Holland and Britain where people could get incredible rates, wow. uh, too good to be true, wow. and then it all collapsed. And then, then what happened? I mean, uh, uh, it, I mean, it didn't. It didn't only collapse in Iceland. It also collapsed, it in, collapsed in Europe. And we, we did almost nothing. So what did you do? Uh, you, had a, you had a revolution. We had a proper crisis. This is why <laughs> a people. Proper crisis. Yeah, I mean, people shouldn't be afraid to have good crisis because during good crisis, you can actually you have this window of change, an opportunity for change, and it can be very bad, like mm -hmm. the Patriot Act in the United States, oh, yeah. uh, or it can be very good, like the Icelandic Modern Media Initiative. Uh, in Iceland, uh, where we tasked the government to make Iceland into a safe haven for freedom of information, expression and speech uh, oh. for the 21st century law, oh. uh, and the constitutional process, which was actually uh, the entire process from day one until the parliament sort of put it into coma recently, uh, was uh, a process where we had a discussion about what our constitution should be. We had an access to it as the general public, uh, so it was written for the general public, uh, by the general public for the general public, which that, is quite uh, that sounds, unique. That uh, sounds amazing. It was beautiful, uh, and that's why it's so infinitely sad that uh, the ruling political parties didn't have the guts uh, to vote on it. What? Exactly. Why? why? Um, well, you know how I it mean, is with people in power. They don't really want to change things. Uh, they want to be, you know, hold on to the power because they've got that they are in there in the parliament or in any open office uh, to serve. To no. serve the people. Exactly. The people who uh, apparently voted on a whole new constitution. Exactly. And they're against it. Yeah, they will not change it slightly. Why not? Uh, well, they, they're afraid to lose their power. It's the only answer that I can give you. So, so the, you, you like refigured the whole power institutions in the constitution? Yeah. How, how, well, do, how does it work? Well, we uh, first of all now we have a system where like uh, votes don't have the same um, 
um, like weight. So, like in my constituency, which is the biggest one, uh, I need twice as many votes to get into parliament as if I am uh, living in the rural rural uh, constituency. Oh. So, uh, parliamentarians there, they need, you know, their vote is twice as powerful as the vote in my constituency. Uh, that was one of the things we're going to change. The election uh, rules. Yes. Okay. Uh, we also wanted to sharpen uh, uh, the division between the three uh, pillars of power. You know, the parliament or the legislators, uh, the the executioners, uh, the people that do uh, execute the orders of the parliament, which are usually ministers and stuff, mm -hmm. and of course the uh, justice system. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's all really messed up right now, and the, the division between it is not clear. Uh, we wanted to bring more power to the people by, for example, 2% of the nation would be able to put forward a bill that the parliament would need to process, oh. uh, and 10% uh, of the nation could call for national referendum. We also had uh, ultra-modern uh, Freedom of Information uh, Act uh, put into the Constitution, like a third-generation Freedom of Information Act. Mm. Do you know what that means? No. It means that all uh, governmental or uh, documents need to be searchable and that you can have them uh, handed over to you by default. There is no secrecy by default. Secrecy needs to be explained if there is a need to, for secrecy. Uh, instead of, um, it's sort of the, rever oh. the reversed everywhere. Oh, you, so you're talking about, like, like in Germany, it's uh, government secrets, uh, they are secret by default, and you wanted to change that into transparency by, by default. default. Yes, exactly. And uh, if it's uh, supposed to be secret, they have to uh, explain why. Yes, yes. Oh, that, that uh, and sense. all documents are filed. Like, even secret documents are filed, so you know that there are secret documents. Right. Uh, and um, and also that uh, internet access to internet mm -hmm. uh, would be a constitutional right. Great. Yeah, but uh, it's in common now. It all failed. But, but it didn't. Didn't it? it failed. Is it, is it, but, uh, is, it all, is it over yet, or is there no. still hope for the constitution? No, there's still hope. Uh, there's always hope, uh, and there are lots of people that really want this new constitution. So uh, are they, uh, so they going to march on the street and uh, demand it? I think in about maybe half a year, a year, something will happen if we get the government, like we have the what we call the Silver Spoon uh, Alliance. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the two new leaders for the, or the leaders for the, the center right and the, the right. The, the uh, parties. Yeah, they're okay. the main parties. Okay. They got the most, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, trust by the general public in Iceland. This is very weird. Uh, <laughs> so. But it's the typical. I mean, yeah. it's everywhere. Like uh, right-wing parties, they go into you know huge party, yeah. cocaine parties, yeah. where they just like are completely reckless, uh, and they start to want to sort of privatize lots of stuff, and and the infrastructure sure. gets weak. Sure. Then the left-wing parties come, like uh, you know the the cleaning lady, and uh, they have to do all sorts of austerity. No, you can't have sweets every day. You just you can only have sweets on Saturdays, right. and right. they clean up all the mess. Uh, and then they can vote it out, and it's just the yo-yo politics. It's very old school. I was hoping we would could get out of it, uh, but apparently not yet. So. Maybe it was a little naive. <sighs> I'm a, I'm a chronic optimist. Uh, could you like uh, we have one minute left? Uh, talk about uh, the crowdsourcing aspect of the constitution. How, yes. how did that work? Okay, so it sort of started first with uh, uh, a 1,000 people national assembly mm -hmm. where people were randomly selected out of a net national registry to just have a discussion about what R needs Randomly? Yeah, okay. just, uh, you know, like you're randomly selected for, you know, some country's jury duty or whatever. Uh, and um, they sat together for two days to discuss what needs to be a part of our uh, social agreement of what sort of society we want to be reflected in the constitution. Right. And then we elected the constitutional parliament. Anybody could run, uh, and uh, politicians were advised not to come close to it, which was very good. Uh, and uh, they actually opened the process of, uh, they had all these ideas from the nation that they used as a basis. Uh, and then they offered anybody that wanted to bring forward suggestions uh, verbally, via me ordinary snail mail, uh, email, or through uh, social media. Uh, so, and all the meetings were, you know, broadcasted live, and anybody could attend them. That's awesome. Yeah, it was and, incredible. And, and no politician was allowed. Well, uh, my political movement, we decided not to uh, interfere too much because we had an opportunity once it was delivered to the parliament to uh, 
you know, air our opinion and voice, uh, but we decided to respect uh, what the constitutional parliament uh, handed over to us, mm -hmm. because that was actually brought into a national referendum uh, last year, in October, and the uh, uh, majority of the nation wanted it, uh, the new constitution as it was, so the parliamentarians should not have interfered like they did in the end, and thus um, uh, we're in this mess. So you're going to continue fighting, right? Absolutely. I love, I love to fight. Thank you. My pleasure.